This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Last week I received an email from someone who said they passed one of my videos on to a friend of theirs and they had to contact me just to let me know that their friend really didn't get it. No offense taken, I know I'm not for everybody, but then this gentleman went on to ask me, have you ever polled your audience to find out what they really want from you and whether or not you're serving them well? I found that an odd question because in the asking there hides this assumption that the only reason to make anything is to appeal to the widest possible audience. And so then the trick is to ask people what they want you to make and just serve them up exactly what they expect from you. That will then lead to more eyeballs on your work, potentially more money in your pocket, and by our modern definition, more success. I mean, I get it, I know why we think like that. It's a great business decision, isn't it? And if we have that utilitarian motive to our art to get more attention and more money for ourselves, then it does make sense to make work which appeals to the broadest possible audience. But you can see the problem in that straight away, can't you? If you're making work to please the crowd, then they're directing your work, not you. Let's say I did decide to poll my audience. I already know what the results would be because I have statistics on these videos. My most viewed videos are things like shooting portraits with one speed light or how to shoot corporate headshots. And that's because the majority of people who are watching photography channels online are beginners looking for tips and techniques and gear recommendations. However, my favorite videos that I've made are ones like the two halves of your creative journey or get small and tell the truth, but those only have a fraction of the views of those more straight ahead tutorials which more directly serve the need of beginner photographers. I've also made and posted a load of little documentaries on other photographers and their process, like the ones I posted recently with Tiffany Robert or Ben Burford or Jack Lowe or Agenda Brown, but those videos again get much smaller views than those more practical tutorials. So if this channel were only a business for me, then the writing is clearly on the wall. If I want to reach the most possible people, then I should focus more on making tutorials, which give practical tips and techniques and gear recommendations, because that will lead me to more eyeballs on my work, maybe more ad revenue in my pocket and all that yummy stuff. But as counterintuitive as it's going to sound to some, I'm actually gonna go in the other direction. Especially since writing and putting out the meaning in the making, I really want to dig in on filming more documentaries with other creative people asking them about their process and doing more of these little lo-fi TED talks or whatever they are where I sit and talk to you about the creative life from my couch. I'm well aware that that decision is going to cost me in some ways, but it's the work that I'm really proud of and for better or worse, it's the work that I want to see more of in the world. It's meaningful to me and I hope if you're watching this, it's meaningful to you as well. I understand that that makes me a niche, but I would rather be that niche well because I really believe in the work that I'm producing than try and appeal as broadly as I possibly could just for things like a bigger audience or a bigger payday. There comes a time for all of us as makers of things to decide what our goal really is because if it's more attention or more money, then you are gonna have to play the game, read the trends and serve up the work that you think is going to appeal to as many people as possible. And let me say that if you choose to go that route, there is nothing wrong with that. This isn't a moral issue. If you decide to use your artistic talents to make a practical living for yourself and pay your bills, that's absolutely fine. How at the end of the day is that any different from someone with mathematical talents choosing to become an accountant because they know they can pay their mortgage? It's all good. 
For years, I used my skills as a photographer to serve companies to take better images of their products so they could sell more of them online. And even though I didn't really believe in their goal or find the work that creatively fulfilling, I was still really proud of the fact that I was paying my bills with a camera in hand. That's a noble goal. However, if your goal is to communicate things you really believe in or to make the work that you want to see more of in the world because it doesn't yet exist, then on some level you will have to count the cost. It may not sustain you financially and that brings its own sort of challenges and problems, but I think there's a higher chance that you'll be proud of the work that you're producing because it's all your own vision and that brings a deeper sense of fulfillment. Your work may or may not find the audience that you want either, because I think when you choose to make the work that you really believe in, you may also appeal to a smaller group of people. But I think you also attract a different quality of fan, a truer fan, who really respects you for your courage. I'll give you an example. For a while now, I've been obsessed with a young musician named Jacob Collier, who you may or may not have heard of because his songs don't get a lot of radio play, and he plays to little theaters rather than stadiums like lots of the big pop acts today. But I have to say that I've noticed that I follow his work more closely and with more intentionality than I do a lot of the bigger acts that I also enjoy because I think I am enamored and so impressed by his singular vision for the music that he makes. Interestingly, if you go to a Jacob Collier gig, you might think to yourself that the audience size is a little smaller than bigger acts out there, but you'll also look around and notice how many talented musicians in their own right are in the crowd. The people who buy tickets to Jacob Collier's gigs are people like Jamie Cullum and Quincy Jones and Herbie Hancock and Steve Vai and Hans Zimmer and Chris Martin. This isn't mass market music made for beginners. It will always appeal to a smaller crowd, those who know enough to know how good it is and how much he's pushing the boundaries of music for all of us. In his fan base, he has quality over quantity. By making the work that he really believes in on his own terms, which by the way I think is a super attractive quality in any artist, he's drawn out of me a more dedicated fan. I've sunk hours of my life into watching his live streams where he breaks down his production process. I've watched loads of video breakdowns from other YouTubers explaining why what he's doing musically is such genius and I've become an evangelist for his work. I tell people about him all the time, just like I'm doing in this video, I suppose. In me, he has a better quality of fan because he's producing his vision his way. So whether you're a musician, a photographer, a filmmaker, a writer, or an artist of any sort, what would it look like if you found the courage to make and produce and share the work that you really believe in? What is that work for you? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What's the work that you really believe in and want to make, but that you're worried it won't be widely popular? Honestly, that's the work I would love to see you make because we're just saturated online with cynically produced middle of the road work that's just designed, made and shared to crack the algorithm of popularity. I hope you find the courage to be different and to make that braver work which you feel more of a connection to and to trust that maybe not the biggest, but the right audience will find that work and love it like you do. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them for over a decade now as my website of choice. When I was looking for a website platform for my work online, one of the important things for me was that the design didn't do the shouting, that it sat in the background. It was very clean and minimalist and classical and that my work did the talking. And I'm no designer, so I was happy when I found Squarespace that they had a whole host a very clean and minimal templates that is super easy to use. I could just drag in text blocks and image blocks and put in videos and everything was nicely laid out, crisp and clean and my work did the talking. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.